and welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be finishing off uh, with the, the knife carving techniques. And um, if you've gotten your dowels, um, if they're it's at least as thick as this, you can do this project with them. But this one's going to be a little bit hard. You can practice a little bit with it, um, but you're not making a whole lot done. So now it's maybe the time to. Um, if you already bought them, or maybe go back to the craft store, uh, they have these grab bags of basswood. This is the new brand. Uh, there would be three in here, and there's also another style of grab bag that has much smaller pieces. You can get either one, uh, or get both. Uh, grab whatever of the grab bags. Um, there's also this kind, which is usually in another section over by model building. Um, it's usually kind of near the dowels. They don't always have these. Um, and they, there's a grab bag like this, and they also have, what, like the dowels, they have them set up uh, with a bunch of uh, longer strips. And basically, you can get either one, make sure that they're basswood, not balsa wood. And, um, you know, you want to get it at least like this thick, it's about a quarter of an inch, um, no thinner than that. So they sell a lot of these. I just now saw them with this thick a piece in them. So um, you can use this, this will be good for other projects too later. Um, and they're, they're pretty cheap. So get, get either that or. Uh, one of the, like, I think they're 36 inches of the strips of whatever the thickest piece they have. Um, so get that or some chunks. And if you can't get either of those, you can get, um, you can go to like a hardware store and get some pine. Um, regular construction pine is, you can't really carve, uh, but they have a, it's a little bit more expensive. But it's called, I think, clear pine or white pine. I believe it's clear pine. Um, and you can get some sheets of it. This was like a really long bore. You get them to cut it up so you can bring it home, uh, or what you might think you'll use. This is uh, pretty good stuff to carve, especially for this type of carving. Um, this one's maybe like a, I don't know, half an inch, three quarter of an inch. Maybe you can call it an inch in longer terms. But um, uh, you know, it's, it's nice and thick. It's it's cheap compared to basswood, and um, it, it's pretty good. It's the cross grain is a, tears out a little bit. Uh, but it's really super nice to carve. So there's another option for you. Um, and if you have one, you know, one of these, it's uh, maybe thick enough. You can definitely get a few cuts out of it today. Um, but you'll want to grab some other wood anyway as we go down the road on other projects. So uh, grab some basswood. You can also get it online. Um, there's some guys on eBay that sell basswood that are, that are pretty good. They don't mill it as clean as some of the people that sell it in bags in the stores, but um, sometimes it's better cuts because they're individual people looking at the wood. Sometimes you get grab bags and the, the basswood's got knots in it or it's you know kind of crap. So uh, getting it from a big store online isn't necessarily the best thing. Try to see if there's some reviews. Something like that. Okay, if you're going to use one of the dowels, you're going to want to make a flat spot on it so you can practice. You can make these cuts on a rounded surface, but it's much easier on a flat one. So this is the V cut. Uh, it's a bit of a stab cut, and you'll see I'm holding the knife a little bit differently, kind of like a pencil. And I'm holding the knife at an angle. You see, I'm going to do one angle, and then when I do the other cut, I'm going to go to the other side. So it's about a 45 degree angle whatever you feel comfortable with, uh, but they do need to be kind of opposite angles and your depth needs to match or be close so that the piece of wood will come free and that you don't make too deep of a stab so that later if there's other cuts around it that, that you don't remove a piece of wood that you're not intending to. Okay, I'm going to do the same cut again so you can see it from the front and see the angle on the blade that I'm using for each side. This is the clear pine that I'm working on now that you can get from a uh, lumber store, Home Depot or Lowe's. Uh, it's very cheap and fun wood to work with. Tears out a little bit on cross grain. Uh, you can see there it lifts up pretty easy. If it takes a little bit more, that's okay. Um, really, we're just learning this for now. Your cuts may not be as clean, that's fine. Uh, but just take your time with it and see how clean you can get it. Uh, and it may take more passes or you may need to make much smaller cuts at first. Go for smaller slivers. Um, as experienced as you get, if you're making larger cuts, you still will to get a clean one. You'll be making a small sliver and then uh, making it larger. Kind of whittling in a canoe shape. And there you can see those there uh, coming out nicely. It took a few cuts on that one to get it cleaner. And you can see a few little slivers have come up. But there's still the same end effect. 
Okay, so let's look at some illustrations. Um, this is about a three-quarter view of what's going to happen. You're going to get in there with your knife about a 45-degree angle, then to go to the opposite side to get a sliver out. Now, when you do this, your depth is going to change if you're only doing a two-cut. To get that piece out, you're going to start out and then you're going to slowly make the depth of the cut go down and you're going to need to match it on both sides. So you need to think about that um, while you're cutting and it helps to imagine that going on so that you're not just kind of making random stabs um, and so that, that you know and eventually your hand-eye coordination will match up. So this is from the front and this is just again to show kind of in a more simpler way uh, that the, there's this depth and the angle and then the opposite angle and the tips of those two cuts uh, meeting up. Uh, this is the most important thing. Um, I, it's really simple but I actually carved for a long time and had no idea and didn't think about this. Uh, I, had, I learned chip carving and that's where I got it from. And that's really about it. Um, at this uh, Here I'm going to show you how the cut can be used in different ways and getting a little more complex with it. But that main kind of idea of having these stab cuts and uh, the depth of the cuts meeting up and the angle uh, so that they go into the same place, the, the tip of the cuts, um, that's basically it. So, But the cut can be used in a bunch of different ways. Uh, that was straight. You can also do a curved cut. Uh, that's what I'm drawing out there, those little S's. And um, when you when you do a curved cut, you're going to bring the blade up. When you have to turn it, you bring it up a little bit taller. Um, and when you want a straight cut, you, you have it down a little further. Okay, now here I'm doing um, a little wider of a sliver. This is basically um, a four cut or at least four plane cut. Um, and so instead of having a sliver taken out, um, on each end I'm having a little bit of a triangle in. It's still at an angle. Well, because all the all you know all the cuts still have to connect. So at the tip here, I'm doing a little bit of triangle, and that will connect these other the side cuts. And the, so the side uh, cuts are going to be at the same depth, except where they're meeting on the sides. There, I'll go into. I think I'm having another video on uh, chip carving, which is the the pyramid you see there, the triangle, and this kind of four cut. Um, carving because uh, it takes even a little more modeling uh, talk about the depth I'm not sure if you guys really need that but um uh, there's a little sampling of it here this is the kind of carving and cut that you'll use for making um, fonts and text carving if you ever want to do words and I'll show you a quick uh, version of that so basically this is you know getting a piece out that's not a sliver um, and it's the same idea though you're imagining you know that all the cuts are connecting in the middle and all of them are about a 45 degree angle. On this square I'm going to try um, and <clears throat> instead of having all the cuts at a 45 degree angle have an actual like rectangle relief so that all the walls of the rectangle are going to be going straight down the 90 degree angles. Um, and, and basically the way you would do that is um, you make a bunch of these sliver cuts to work out all that wood um, in the middle and then you after you get most of the wood out then you go about uh, you know whittling out the sides to get the angle that you want um, again I'll probably go into this more depth in another video alright so now I'm gonna be doing a little curved cut um, the same as the first one where uh, it is just a splinter where it's um, shallow at both ends and then deep in the middle like a canoe uh, but it it is going to be curved, so um, it's basically the same idea. You know, you just are going to be imagining the depth and angle and where the uh, the depth of the cut is going to be meeting in the middle. Now, generally, with uh, this kind of work, when you want to do curves, you want to use a curved blade, um, but you can use a straight one. Now, you can see that you're going to keep the blade a little bit more upright so that uh, it's the the blade isn't leading your cut. Um, and also if you're having a hard time uh, getting a nice curve with your cutting hand then keep your cutting hand steady while it's in the wood and turn the piece itself this is something that engravers do because they have even more resistance when it comes to uh, cutting and they do a lot of curves so that's where I learned the little trick it works very well okay now we're gonna do the triangle or you can think about this as an upside down pyramid now I'm going in there first with the smaller one because um, the exacto blades are a little bit thin, so they're going to make smaller cuts. Uh, but it's the same idea with this uh, triangle, as that is, 
if they all go in from the same angle um, and they go to the same depth, then you'll be able to remove a piece of wood cleanly. And uh, this is basically what chip cutting is. You'll use a different type of tool if you do a lot of it. Uh, but it's a bunch of these, and they're basically put into designs and patterns. Um, it's pretty hard to do. Um, I still am not very good chip carving, uh, but I will say that learning how to do it has helped my other carving tremendously. Um, but it's basically a bunch of these, and um, they all kind of have to be exactly the same to look good. <clears throat> very meticulous carving. Uh, but I, some of you, it may be your thing, so definitely go check that out. Uh, and just take a look at it. It is um, very interesting uh, craft wood carving. So that that's it right there. You basically kind of sink it in to the main point and then pull it out um, and try to get that depth right. And okay, so what I mean by a bunch of triangles together is like, <clears throat> say it was right here, and it'd be basically there'd be a bunch of them like this, and they're the the top the top edge would be it'd be sharing that. So there wouldn't even be if you're doing it really well at it that shared edge of the triangles uh, wouldn't have any flat spot it would just be a peak um, and that's kinda how the perfection that they kinda go for in chip carving uh, and it's called that because you know you're taking little chips out and um, so that's basically it and uh, it, it creates a very interesting effect um, it really looks beautiful after they build it up you should look at some other stuff though because I, I really awful at it so just to show you a few other tools, uh, this is what some of the other chip carving knives look like. Um, this is, I forget what this is called, but um, that's a curved blade and it's kind of, you can see how it really lends itself to making uh, curved cuts like that. It looks like I'm okay at it, but I have no control over it at all. Interesting little tool there. Okay, so I'll show you another tool here and um, while I'm on this, um, this type of carving, just this this one cut of these kind of V cuts, um, it goes into so many different types of uh, crafts and, and wood stuff uh, besides regular wood carving. And one of them is uh, printmaking, uh, or what you all call it, wood cutting or block cutting. It has a lot of different names. Um, a lot of people now use, um, they'll use gouges and V tools. Um, but in the old days, they, and, and still some guys like me um, prefer to use a single blade tool. Uh, it gives a different look and um, it's just a little more traditional. Uh, and basically, you do printmaking um, you're using a bunch of these V cuts. And um, that's how they used to do it in the old days. And I'll show you a little bit how I kind of do it. I really got into this um, and I've, I've done a, a whole lot of uh, printmaking, stamp making um, in this kind of fashion. I'll show you here. Um, so, And I just kind of draw out some kind of swirly acanthus stuff, whatever I'm so happen to be doing. And, um, and and I just use what I showed you so far um, to make this happen. Basically, um, you know, you can go negative or positive on the, um, the stamping, you know, whatever you want in the end to be stamped or black. Uh, in this case, you know, I maybe want the, the shape there for that to be the black part. So I would basically go around, make V cuts all around the outside of it, um, and then take out the background. Really what I usually do, is, so I don't have to take out all the background, is I just make it really highly detailed. Um, or I have like a all in one direction line background. So this tool here though, um, I think you saw me switch out the blade on it. Um, these are uh, little surgical uh, scalpels um, that you can get. I think they usually come with that larger blade and then get this little one. Um, here in Brooklyn they have these weird surgical supply places where you can get these. I'm not sure if I've ever seen them anywhere else. Uh, but you can order them online. A lot of the hunting guys have gotten into these. They use much bigger blades, but it's the same idea. It's a very sharp knife um, and different kind of blades that you can just kind of, re you know, you don't have to sharpen or deal with. So this is a curved blade. It's very small, so it's great for getting these curved places and into little tight spots. Um, it's basically like an X-Acto, but um, it's just a, a little bit more um, specialized. And... Um, this one's dull, so I kind of give up on this, uh, but it, it's, you can see it's still working anyway. This type of printmaking and stamping can be used as regular stamp. Um, you can see one of my other ones that's already made here. I put a little handle on it, which is actually just made out of an old chair. And um, it's used, that's why it looks like that. But um, this is kind of the classical printmaking way, where you 
um, smear out some ink and um, it's for larger prints you kind of have to do this um, the regular stamp pads won't work uh, not just that the stamp pads aren't big enough but um, it's very hard to get a, a good print out of it so um, you basically you do this so you can get ink uh, distributed evenly and it's a nicer thicker ink so it makes more of like an art piece afterwards instead of just a stamp uh, but you don't have to get into that if you don't want to you can just make some small ones and it's a really great fun project I might uh, revisit it again in some more depth um, and then you can see there's made a stamp there with uh, the carving not very good one but whatever all right, and then we're going to finish off uh, with uh, visiting the letters once again. So again, this is kind of um, some of it's a little tiny pyramid, upside down triangle pyramid, uh, and some of it's the square that I showed you with the 45 degree angles, uh, and some of it's just sliver cuts with the original. Uh, here I'm using a knife that's um, kind of just a little step past the exacto blade, um, just a little bit more meat on it. And um, so I made two 45 degree cuts on each uh, top and bottom and now I'm doing it on the sides and then that will take out that main base piece. And then for the serifs you're going to do basically a little uh, triangle that we saw earlier like that and then a little si side cut and that will make that little serif that's seen in so many font styles. Um, and you may want to re-widen up that, that main stock and then you come back there and you see I went a little bit long so I could get that serif or the tail of it at least, and then I'll get one cut to get that that side thing there. <clears throat> and uh, in carving later, especially in the relief stuff, um, you can do an antiquing method, sometimes called glazing, uh, where you put on a, a dark stain of some kind. In this instance, I'll use a, an antique wax. Um, the wax itself is actually vintage, but it's also... Um, it's a darker color wax and so that's a, it's just an easy way for me to do it right here basically you put on whatever it is and then you wipe it off and then that wiping you don't wipe inside the crevices so it'll leave a dark spot and uh, I think in the old days it was called glazing and now it's called antiquing because it makes things look old because over time uh, crevices get filled with junk and uh, the peaks get rubbed clean and there you have it all right, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, learned something. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please leave a comment and let me know how awful it was. And uh, I'll upload again soon.